day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Get me. <laughs> Come get me. Appreciate so, that. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't go that far, but I feel you. Man. <laughs> well, remember, remember the big time when, as, as an air crew member, Brother Josh, remember that? When they, when, they, when they had the term truth and contact, all focus is on the truth and contact. Roger that. And, and, and if an aircraft goes down, the army will kill itself. The army kill itself, but it will break his neck to get to that power. They said, no, nope, he got to go. It, it's all about us being one, one accord, taking care of one another. Yeah. Matter of fact, I saw something earlier uh, last week when he was talking about with Mel Gibson, when he went into, when he was getting ready to take his soldiers to combat. He talked about there were Jews, Gentiles, black, white, and everything else. He said there's racism and everything else, but we, that's all set aside right now because that person that's on your right or your left, you got to come, you got to depend on him. The movie He's, not black anymore. He's not white anymore. He's not yeah. a Jew or Gentile. He, he is your buddy, your compact buddy, that's your right. partner, and you got to depend on him. And I think that's what it's like being in the house of the God. Come on, brother. Right. Brothers and sisters are those who do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Come on now. We got to explore that. We have, we have as a body of believers, got to begin to explore that. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. And our white brothers, I'm sorry, I mean, cut y'all. No, no, no. My I'm white sure. brothers are not accustomed to that kind of a, of a, of a, of approach because they've been able to be quote unquote successful in furthering their agenda, not Christ's agenda, but their agenda in and factionalizing. Yeah. And I think that's why they have a tendency to be a lot more political about this thing. And we are kind of gaining that 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 tactic. But the reality of it is is both the Democratic and the Republican Party are in need of salvation. They're, they're corrupt yeah. in, the, in, in the in the administration. So the Amen. church is going to be hated of all nations. Uh-huh. The body of Christ will be hated of all nations for his name's sake. We have to solidify the body of Christ. We have really got to begin to reach out for our white and black, I mean, white and Asian and black and Hispanic brothers because we can reach them. They have the same Holy Ghost we got. They might have some bad teaching yeah. that, that, that really separated us along the way. But I think if our greatest thing that we can do for the United States of America right now is to unite as a body of believers and let we're them going to we're, 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 we're going to we, we're, we're not going to have a choice we don't have because a choice. we're going to come under the attack Come and on. just like those different branches of the service, come on. we are going to have to come together come on. in order to survive. Right. And so once, once, once this attack is in full force on the body of Christ, that's in the Bible. Come on. We are going to be on one accord. We then they're going to recognize that okay, we are all children of come God. On. There is. You no know what, problem. brother? There and let me no tell you something. Free. That'll be a miracle within itself. Yeah. If if because because right now, I mean, there's so many not just church splits, denominational splits now mm -hmm. because of you know this one won't that decided they're gonna ordain homosexual pastors. This one, the, the, this denomination decided they're gonna do this, and and so now whole denominations are splitting off from one another and being becoming splintered. So I hear what you're saying. For us all to come together under one accord, brother, that would be a miracle all within itself. But it, 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 it's, it's a move of God. Isn't there somewhere says something about there being a great falling away that you dang right. might be revealed? But, there, yeah. There's some fallacies. There's some some goat, I mean, some goats. I mean, some, what do you call them? Wolves and sheep. Some goats. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, but we gotta understand we have to be one accord. He said in John 17, he said, I have given them thy word so they can be one. The, the, the centurion is demonstrating a unity of command. We must have a unity of faith. We must understand there's a warfare going on, there's a battle. And if we operate understanding there's a battle, we can win. 
Okay. I will show, um, we are, <clears throat> we continue to draw uh, the line in the sand because in our conversation, I know you guys are gonna maybe a little bit uh, contrary to what I'm saying, but we keep using this term, you know, our white brothers and sisters. Yeah. Um, we, 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 I, I think there's something there. Uh, and when I say that, I think that there's something there. I think that, that there's, you know, we talk, I think we use the word foothold or, or just the opportunity that Satan, uh, that's how he contaminates yeah. what it is and the I'll message that we're, that we're doing. Let's check this out, uh, cause I gotta get ready to go, but you guys are bringing up some stuff and you know, when we're talking about this, this fraction and, and these denominations going away, I, I heard something earlier in the week about, uh, it, was, it had to do with the red flag law. Long story short, trying to take weapons away from people who shouldn't have weapons because typically they, they've got some sort of, um, usually like a mental issue, something going on. Oh, felony. Yeah. Well, what has happened in some of these places because of, you know, that, that uh, hey, Second Amendment, we, there are police uh, individuals, you know, that are in the in law enforcement that say, hey, look, uh, I don't care what the sheriff said, I, I'm not going to enforce it. Right there, we can see the how we be, they, they become ineffective. You know, you got two individuals. Hey, I'm gonna tell you, they they are very intelligent. Yeah. Uh, speak very articulately, but in spite of that, I'm not gonna listen to authority. That, to me, likewise is how uh, we are as institutional um, bodies. You know, when we talk about the, the the body of Christ, and going back to this issue of discipline. You guys mentioned, um, you know, racism in the church. You guys, I'm gonna just tell you that if you get a chance, check out a movie called Lords of Discipline. Uh -huh. It has about a, it has to do with about a black, uh, one of the first black cadets in this fictional um, academy, and how racism was there, but they protected that individual. Didn't had a problem with his color, yes, but they said once he was a part of our body. Come on now. He's going to get the same opportunity to succeed like the rest of us, exactly. which says something about what we are talking about. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So, brothers, you know, once again, I'm sorry I got to leave, but uh, you, you guys always get me thinking, and I appreciate being in the spirit with y'all. And uh, Lord, make this holy ground. You guys be good, stay strong, and stay, stay blessed, but I got to go. Okay, brother. I took those slides for you, so you want to take a look at this slide you, you know I will. Keep, okay, keep doing that, don't you? Keep doing it. All right, guys, take it easy. All right. All right. Elvin. Yes, sir. Let's stop you, please. Keep pressing forward. Just, and uh, we talked about being in a warfare. Let's go to uh, this slide here, Second Corinthians chapter 10. I want you to read that for us because we definitely got to operate in one accord and we got to understand what the word is saying and how we need to operate it. What, what you got there, sir? Now, I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who am present and based among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. But though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, yes, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God, yes, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled. And that goes back to your submission again, don't it? And, and, and when they talk about the uh, the fact that we are in a warfare, and the fact that submission also means stay with submission to what? To the word, right? right? Yes, abide in me. Abide. Come on now. Abide in me. And my word abide in you. And whatsoever you ask in my name. Exactly. And he and also I know that he's saying that scripture talk about being bold. There's a bit of boldness that comes with being in the body of Christ, isn't it? To be bold, to be confident, <laughs> confidence in the weapons. Now, hey, look, Jimmy, the reason why we get qualified with a weapon is so we can be confident in using that weapon when it's time to do combat. The reason we qualify because we need to have confidence 
and the weapon that we are supposed to use in combat. Brother Addison, the weapon of our warfare. What we just read was 2 Corinthians chapter 10, where it's almost so the weapons of our warfare are not cardinal, but mighty through God to the pulling down the stronghold, right? What I want to be able to say is the fact is that Brother, Brother Elder Johnson was, remember, we had to get weapons qualified. Why do we have to get weapons qualified? For to use them effectively to accomplish whatever our goal is. Exactly. In other words, you had to be confident. And the only way you can be confident is that you have to have understanding of how to use the weapons that we are supposed to use in combat. And I think a lot of cases are we teaching and equipping the saints to be weapons qualified for the weapon that they're supposed to use in combat. Most of the time we did not have over overarching, you know, awareness of what our mission was. <laughs> that was that was left to this, you know, generals and stuff. Uh, right. We knew what we were dealing with on the on the line, but yeah. Um, in the kingdom of God, because we had a mind of Christ, right. we had access to that information. And that information kind of leads us to understand that his agenda is to save a human soul. Yeah. Regardless of the opportunity or circumstance that it presents itself in. And like you said earlier, the Roman government made these guys look like toys. I mean, they were Boy Scouts in comparison. I mean, they are Boy Scouts in comparison to what the, the centurions in, the, in, the, in, the, in law enforcement did in Rome. They were hanging people up. I mean, it was like they lined the streets with, with, with crosses. Right. So, but there was a certain way that Christ encouraged them to behave in order to gain even the Roman soldiers. Come out. And I think that that is what we are being enticed to do now. Instructed to not entice them. It's likely a commandment. Love your enemy. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. To what end? That God be glorified. That the love that he demonstrated at that cross could be manifested before them right there in that evil situation that they they, they may be a part of. Right, right. And if, if we're able to do that, then he can do the seven. He, uh, he will enable, he, we know he's able to do the seven bullets to the back, you know, survival thing. It is within his power to save us out of whatever circumstances, situation we find ourselves in. We think that three Hebrew bars in the first of fire was a nice little parable or a cute little fairy tale. But it really happened. It but happened. Then you're going into the lion's den with something that, you know, that came out of somebody's imagination. But these things were given to us as examples of what God is able to do when we comply. Right. It, it's not always our demise. And, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not volunteering for martyrdom. If, 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 it, if it comes to that, I just have to get the Holy Ghost to help me out. But. But I understand why he's asking us to do the things that he asked us to do. Show love. It's love. And, and, and what, what I want to throw in there, though, because the, the reason that I'm getting to understand what Christ is saying today in the Word, though, and I'm trying to push back toward this with you, though, is that the centurion Jesus model, one of the things about being a soldier was they train, right? They train to do combat. Are we, and maybe that's what we want to start pushing toward, when it says equip the saints, right? The fivefold ministry gift is to equip the saints to do the ministry, right? In the military, what do we do, with Brother Addison? We equip the soldier, the airmen, to do the work of the military. We train them. We got weapons, brother. I'm saying is that we got to be weapons qualified. That's what I was, when we just couldn't read that scripture. Weapons qualified to do what? To go in and do the work of the ministry. And so I don't think we've been teaching. I, I'm, I'm confident that we have not been teaching people to become weapons qualified and the spiritual weapons that God gives them. Okay, that, and that's the question. What is the spiritual weapon? What do you perceive that as being? Ah, there you go. That's the a good question. Authority. Come on now. Authority given <laughs> to us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, <laughs> to do greater works. <laughs> hey, hey, 
The word is the weapon. You remember Ephesians, it says, put on the whole armor of God. Huh? He said the breastplate of righteousness, the sword, right? The hammer, the spear, the shield, all that is the word of God. That centurion soldier said, Brother Addison, speak the word only. You want to use your weapon. The yeah. word is the weapon. You know, you know it's funny. <laughs>